Well, hi folks. Um, you probably know who this is. I've just been riding him is what I've been doing. And what I've done is I've evolved to finding out to pick up some lengths of the chains because of the distance of the optimum place for my concho. Okay, so what that means is, is that when I'm done, I'll be able to hold my palm concho and I'll be right here with my coils and I'll be able to dally and the, there'll be a slight slack in the rein between the palm concho and the cheek. That's the perfect deal. So what happens is over time, however long that is, six months, he keeps getting better collection because of the spade bit. So the lengths are gonna change. And then if he falls backwards and it's too much for him, then I'll, link, I'll let the chains back out. And then when I find the correct length, here's the important part of this story. You notice I wadded them up from the swivel back. All right, if that's, if that's four lengths, when I'm done, I'll take two from in front of the swivel and two from in back of the swivel and then hook them back together. That way I won't lose my swivel. Okay, I have a little bit of room on the strap connecting to the bit. You can see that. And I took the leather off of here at the concho because before I had big loops and I was needing big loops because I was riding in the bosalito. Well now I'm riding straight up and if it doesn't go well, I'll just go back to the bosal, the two rain. Here is my palm concho. Here's gonna be my optimum place because I, when you're all done, it has to be for roping. Remember, this is a ranch horse. So in the interim, what I'm doing is I'm connecting my hand to that bit and it's gotta come out the bottom of the feet. Okay, my skeleton is what's gonna make it happen. So I'm gonna show you what I mean because when you ride a bridle horse, the hand has to be quiet. And my friend Bo Rath up in North Dakota, I want you to understand, my friend, that perfection is overrated. Perfection will be when he's 10, not when he's five. So just hang in there and be patient with your, with your young horse. So I'll walk forward, then I'll stop, and I'll ask him to walk backwards. As he's walking backwards, I'm wanting him to balance that bridle, as you can see. So when you get into a bridle horse, the way you tune them up after a year of off or six weeks is you rock them backwards. So what I'm doing is just playing with the rein. And it's literally the weight of the chains in the Romal is what's putting him into collection. The curb strap is there, but the pre-signals are working. I'll show you what I mean. Here's nothing. Now I'm gonna ask him to walk backwards. Exhale as I execute. Now, Bo, I know you don't miss a thing. So what happened was the right hind foot stepped out. Okay, too bad. Next time it won't. If it does, the time after that it won't. So that's the mentality I want you to have with your horses because I know you have the talent to do what, what these good horses that you own up there on that ranch. So I'm keeping the horse in a straight line with my calves. I always wear spurs, but I don't always use them. The object is to have a spur for insur insurance during the near-death experience. So this is the way this is working. As you can see, this is a pretty good spot for my lariat right here. And I can still give the rein back. And if I'm roping, I can still manipulate my horse wherever it is I need to be and keep my hand quiet and keep it up out of the way. Now folks, please understand that what I'm doing today has nothing to do with my western bit. Nothing. This is a whole different chapter here. 
What this has to do with is the art of the bridle horse as in spade bit. If I had, we've got, I don't know how many people watch our show. There's a hell of a lot of them. Well, less than 1% are actually gonna make a spade put horse and that's fine. So the Western bit was designed to take care of the other 99% that want to go down and get the mail and just have a nice bit and a horse that's comfortable carrying a bit. So don't get the two disciplines confused. When you ride the Western bit, you're gonna see me later on with another horse, I'll keep my hand low until he's prepared, then I'll be able to put my hand wherever I want. That's what I'm after right there. And what it means is that my body is coming out the bottom of his feet. Whew. Okay, folks, now we got another chapter here. And what's really happened over the last five, six years, whatever it's been, is there's people that have a colt that was started in a snaffle and they've been riding it for a year or whatever, five rides, 100 rides, and they actually want to make the hackamore work, okay? As you know, that's not the, the tradition I follow, but that's irrelevant to me because my friend Shelly up in Oregon, she has this really nice young horse and she said, I want to learn the hackamore. And I said, good, I'll help you any way I can. So there's a series of things that I believe if you're gonna transition to the hackamore, understand first that it's the opposite of a snaffle, as in, the way you present your hands. But I've got, I told her I'd make a list of exercises and I'll share them with everybody. But for me, a horse that's already been ridden, and I think it's three, first you gotta do is to teach it a one rein stop on the ground in a hackamore. This is a hackamore, okay. Now, I'm gonna turn him around a little bit. What I wanna show you, and the thing you wanna watch is this is about my left hand. And what I'm gonna do is bump and release just like I do a hackamore. Here's the nose band, nice and low. And his front feet are to move, but stay in one place while he's walking in a circle and his hindquarter has to cross. If it doesn't cross, it's not a one rein stop. So on that note, for anybody that doesn't understand why we cross the hind legs, it's called insurance. When you can shut a horse down, they cannot buck or run away or do anything with their legs crossed. If they won't cross their legs, then you're not there. So watch him carry his own head right here on a loose feed rope. That's what this whole thing is about. So I'm gonna ask him to walk around and I'll bump his head and I'll bump his head and if you'll notice, the neck is turned. Okay, you know this is Chinaco. So what does it take to get that? All it takes is for you to have a horse. Everybody knows how to do groundwork. Have a horse that's walking around in a circle. Walking around in a circle. And then you're going to step into the horse with your rein equal to that of on top of their back. Now I'm gonna bump, and he's walking in a circle doing a one rein stop on a loose rein. And what I've taught him is to know that whenever I rode him in the Bosal for how many ever years it was, when something goes wrong, he's gonna get shut down. Now on that note, if you look at this bank on the left over here, you wouldn't do that on that bank. We know a lady that did that in an English saddle and got dumped. Well, so be it. I'm gonna go the other way. Get the horse moving, stepped into it, raise my rein. If I have to close my hand and bump, fine. But what I want is the horse to yield its nose on a loose rein. That's what it looks like. Now I'm gonna get on and show you the end result. And over here I'll show you how, once again, how to tie the rein.
Now the hackamore just became a hackamore as opposed to a halter. I'm above the knot. If you've got the old flat nylon halter with the brass buckles then save your money and buy a good one. That's a knot. Now you tighten that knot down and you slide it right there. Now you have a hackamore. I'm going to go back where I was and I'll show you what a one rein stop looks like on a horse. Now this can be done at a walk, a jog, and a trap. If you do it at a lope, you'll probably do a somersault. But you can do it. You can do it if you got 40 acres. Right, you don't just snap But around. if you ever watch the Bee Westerns where the Indian shoots the cowboy and the horse tips over, which never made sense to me, that's how they do that. They teach them to roll. Now, once again, I'm going to walk in a circle. Bump and release. My right hand is given all the slack in the world. Now, I want to shut my horse down. I'm going to do it as I go past Deb. No, oh, no, I want you to be able to see my left hand. You see my horse walking in a circle? All right, now watch. I'm going to bump, reach back, disengage the hindquarter and give him the rein back. And he's going to walk around his front end on a loose rein. Okay, I might as well get this out of the way. Well, that's Chinaco. Well, so what? I'm not going to go rope some dink off the range and show you this. Okay, it took time to teach him. So that's the goal. Most of you, all you got is time if you think about it. So that's the goal. I'll go the other way. The circle. I want to shut my horse down. I can drop my rein and bump, disengage the hindquarter with my right foot and make sure that he is walking, oh, crossing his hind legs on a loose rein. So Shelly, that's your first thing you got to get done. On the ground, on the horse. Now, I'm going to share with you a little something. This exercise that you just watched is all about you being a fair leader. That's all it is. If you hang on their head, they're going to push on the hackamore and run through it. Lindsay Wright. We're back to the list of people that affected my life as a cowboy. Lindsay Wright was born on Fresno Flats. Now for you trivia folks, somebody's going to know where Fresno Flats was and what town it turned into. His dad, Lindsay's dad, back in the early days, drove stage on the Sugar Pine stagecoach route. I got to see the bells that were on the hames that they put on the long hitches back then. And the reason was because of all the switchbacks and the curves, a driver could hear the bells of somebody else's hitch coming towards them because you're dealing with real narrow roads. Okay, the bells were the pride of a good teamster. It was a big deal. It's like a Ramal rain. All right. His sister, Aura. I got to, he gave me my first job, which I failed at, incidentally. Anyway, Aura, his sister, was like the classic flower apron, cotton dress, never had pants on her whole life, I don't think. Anyway, the famous story about her is a cowboy rode up to the house in the summertime, and she said, would you like a glass of milk? He said, sure, thank you very much. She got a glass of milk, gave it to him. He took a drink, hesitated, drank the entire glass, handed her the glass and said, thank you, ma'am. And he rode off. She smelled something and she smelled the glass and she had just given him an entire glass of sour milk. And he never said a word. <laughs> That's Aura Wright. 
Now they left two children, and they're in that same country I'm telling you about. But I remember him telling me that it was either him or his dad when they were young would ride from the saloon in Coarse Gold over Deadwood to get home in the dark at night and probably a little inebriated. Anyway, you're going to be curious why I failed. We went up to Grub Gulch in a stock rack, jumped the horses out. He had an Indian cowboy that worked for him, the old guy. He's probably 30. And uh, jumped my horse out, and I'm just like, okay, this is it. I'm cowboying. He said, gather the bulls. So we came off of Deadwood, and we went all the way to the bottom, as was the idea. As I got on my horse, I, I didn't see the Indian. He disappeared. Well, he disappeared on purpose because he had he didn't even acknowledge me as a human. Anyway, I'm thinking, okay, I got this. So I ride back and forth all the way across Deadwood, all the way to the bottom, never saw one single bull. I get to the Fresno River, and here's all the bulls and this cowboy sitting there not looking at me, knowing that I finally made it. And he took the lead, and we crossed the river and went up to the house. So that day I had to make a decision. Should I take up house painting, or am I going to stay with it? Because I was humbled so small at 16 years old, I thought there's no way I'm ever going to make it. But I didn't quit. So there's Lindsey Wright. He smoked Raleigh cigarettes, and he could squat in a regular chair at a kitchen table. He was probably six foot four. <laughs> Were those the same bowls that you dumped out on the road? No, that was going to the Triangle Sail Barn in Badera. I tipped the stock rack over on the side because I was contemplating how much of a hand I was, I'm sure. And I laid the truck down the ditch and the bulls just climbed right out of the truck and walked off. And uh, unbeknownst to me, everybody knows everybody, so they got a hold of Lindsay and the ranchers, the real ranchers, took care of the whole wreck. So that was another one of my famous stunts as a 16-year-old cowboy. But anyway, Lindsey was a really good guy, and he made me laugh because he chain smoked, but he was getting them coupons, you know, so you could get a, a coffee <laughs> cup or something. <laughs> anyway, that's the deal on the one range stop and the chains. Thank you.